All right, so here we go. We're just gonna get like right into this because I feel like this is just one of those topics that you just need to like rip off like a Band-Aid. Just like one, two, three, down the shot of Lucid because you lost to your friends at Bar Dice. So we're just gonna go and jump right into it. I'm Jels from Fitment Industries, wheels, tires, suspension at fitmentindustries.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's get into today's episode of the Build Sheet where we are going to be talking about how to build your car the right way. So you're going to tell me how to build my car? I mean, yeah, no, kind of, sort of, I, I mean, sure. So let's go ahead and imagine this real quick. You just picked up your brand new project car. You're all excited to get it home. You've been spending the last few weeks picking out parts already and dreaming about what you're going to do to it. And that's great. That is an exciting time. There's nothing better than shopping for car parts, especially for a car that is new to you. You can't wait to dive in and start making it your own. But I'm going to just have to just, I'm going to have to stop you there for a second, bud. All right. I'm just going to need you to cool your jets for just a moment. I have some important things that I want to go over with you before we just start throwing parts at a car, all right? Unfortunately, it happens more often than not that someone gets a hold of the new project car that they just can't wait to start wrenching on. And so the first thing that they do is hop on eBay and just start adding a bunch of into their shopping cart. All the parts come in, they get installed, wait a few more paychecks to come in, order some more, and it's an endless cycle. And what eventually ends up happening over a period of time is that all of a sudden, the car isn't turning out so great then the car ends up not being driven because something needs to be fixed. But there's no money left in the budget to fix it because it was all spent on car parts. So there it sits, waiting for tax season to come around so it can be roadworthy again. <laughs> Moving on. Probably one of the most important steps when building a car to make sure that you're building it the right way is to get all of the issues and maintenance done first. Now I know, you're like, gels. That's bullshit. I want to make it cool, I want to make it go fast, and I want to make it my own. And those are very fair arguments, I get it. And making sure that everything is up to par with the car before diving in head first to mods doesn't sound all that fun, because the truth is, it really isn't. But even though you may not see it right away, making sure that everything is in good shape with your car before you start modifying it is going to help you so much in the long run of the build. Make sure the engine is running strong, take care of any rust issues, make sure your suspension is in order, all the electrical works, transmission shifts good, and I promise you, if you get all that done, it's going to save you a lot of time and money in the end. And not only that, it's gonna save you from wanting to ditch the car halfway through your build when issues upon issues just keep coming up and you can't seem to catch a break. Now that doesn't mean that you can't swap out old parts or parts that need to be replaced with aftermarket parts while doing this. In fact, I would recommend that. Obviously, if your shocks are blown, go get some coilovers. If the brake lines need replacing, go get some braided brake lines. But don't go and slap a big old spoolie boy on there right away and hope for the best because that's just not gonna end well. So after you've done your homework, you've completed all your assignments of making sure everything is in proper working order, it's time to have some fun. Now this is where a lot of people tend to make the second big mistake, and that is modifying their car without keeping it balanced, or they start throwing parts on it without a final product in mind, and that is huge. This is what can really make or break your build, and you know what I'm talking about. Like, have you ever gone to a car show or car meet and you see that one car that you really like something about it, but there's just that one thing that's just like really throwing you off? Odds are that car wasn't balanced in the way that it was built. When going into a fresh build, the best thing you can do is have a set plan of what the outcome of the build is going to look like and how it's going to perform and what it's going to be built for. By planning a build with a vision of what the car is going to look like at the end, you're setting yourself up for success in that way. So sit down, draw some doodles, open up Forza if you're lucky enough to have your car loaded up in Forza. Literally think about everything that you wanna to do to the car and then when you finally have it all planned, you can start to order cool shit for the car. Now like I mentioned, keeping the build balanced is another important key factor in doing that and that is something that comes into play here as well. A good rule of thumb to follow is that never have one part of the car take away from another part of the car. If you're planning on going with a clean look for your car, make sure that the car is clean throughout the whole thing. If you're going for an aggressive track look, make sure that your aero flows throughout the whole car. Never get too focused 
on one part of your car because it is noticeable when that's the case. We see that a lot of times with builds where someone just wants to run a big chassis mount wing and then they are like, cool, got it, arrow, check, done but then never get around to adding a splitter or a diffuser or some side splitters. And the wing really just kind of sticks out and you notice it. It's like, why that looks odd. So keep your build consistent. Make the entirety of the car flow. Stick to the styling and theme that you intended to go with from the beginning. And I can guarantee that it's gonna turn out way better than just slapping some random pieces on it time and time again. Which brings us to our next point. Obviously you're going to be searching for parts, buying parts, installing parts, and driving on those parts. Don't cheap out. If there is one thing that I've learned since I've been involved with cars that I would pass on to you watching, is don't cheap out on parts for your car. Now I mean that in like the nicest way possible. I know like sometimes you can't just afford like the higher end stuff and that's fine. But what I'm talking about is when I was in high school, I bought my fair share of eBay exhaust and intakes for my cars. I was working part time slinging out sub sandwiches. And all I could think about was when the next time I could buy something for my car because that's that's all I wanted. And because of that, I purchased the first $300 cat back from eBay that fit my car because immediate gratification and saving up money was for losers. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. At the time, that's what worked for me. But looking at it now and looking back at all the headaches that went into installing those parts because it didn't line up or something broke because it wasn't the best quality or it fell apart maybe six months after installing it because the integrity of the whole thing wasn't there. I can now see that if I would have just waited, saved up my money for a couple months bought an actual name brand intake that it wouldn't have fallen out of the engine bay going 55 miles an hour down highway 13. So take your time, do your research on brands and nine times out of 10, you're going to get what you pay for. And yes, that's an old saying, but it is very true. And the parts may be more expensive, yes. No, you may not be able to purchase them right now, but I can guarantee that if you do save and you do wait, when you finally get that package in the mail, everything fits so nice, you don't have to worry about things fitting, you don't have to worry about cutting stuff, or you don't have to run to the parts store because the bag that has the hardware is missing two bolts out of it. It's going to make it all worth it. Quality is one of those things that I personally begun to appreciate more and more. Now that may just be be getting old, but who knows? But what I do know is that it's a lot more fun to say Gretty than Speed Pro Performance Street Fast Race Parts. Okay, maybe the other one was a lot more fun to say, but you get the point. Which brings us to the last, but certainly not least, way to make sure that you are building your car properly. And that, my friends, is to make sure that you're building your car for yourself. Now we've talked about this in the past and it's something that I always think is a good idea to bring up because we picture cars as an extension of our personalities and as a great way of expressing ourselves through something else. I think that it has really become easy lately to get caught up in a lot of the trends that go on in the car scene and it can become easier to just do something to your car because it's what's cool and it's what people are liking online. And when you really sit back and look at it, it's really something that you probably would have never done to your car in the first place. We see it a ton right now with the whole wide body and over fender trends with the aggressive arrow, the crazy wraps, crazy stance, and it can almost seem that if you don't do those things to your car, then you won't fit in. And then if you don't fit in, then why build a car at all? None of those things that I mentioned are necessarily bad things. I love over fenders on FRSs and BRZs. It looks great. I think they look fantastic. But personally, I'll never do it. I get asked all the time, when's the rocket bunny kit coming in for the car? But it's not in my build plans. Build your car for you, plain and simple. If you generally wanna do those things to your car, then all power to you. Get the crazy wrap, throw some underglow on it, throw the over fenders on, do whatever you want to do. And that's the most important part. And that's what makes the car scene so awesome. So with all that being said, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Wheels, tires, and suspension, fitmentindustries.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to check the little bell so you can get notified when we upload next so you can be the first one to comment first down in the comment section below. But that's gonna do it for today. I'm Jels from Fitment Industries. We will see you later. Peace.